society, the only society attendant to the festival last year, and where were we placed in the overall competition? Third. Third, Margaret, out of one. First place went in a hastily reorganized schedule to the man who collects the tickets for his owl impersonation. Second place went to one of the absent societies for the best use of pauses. <laughs> that adjudicator, that poor, embarrassed, beleaguered woman who didn't even bring herself to give us first place at a festival when we were the only ones there. Oh, you're so negative, Gordon. I'm trying to be realistic here, Margaret. I'm trying to paint a picture of a society that desperately needs to stay within its limits. And limits, Margaret, are one thing that we have in abundance. So what do you say? Let's stay away from the festivals, let's stay away from the Shakespeare, let's stay away from the musicals, and stick to what we're best at. You've written another play, haven't you, Gordon? Hmm, just so happens, Bernard, that the creative juices have been flowing in me again. Um, are you taking minutes there, Martha uh, Joyce? Yes. Well, I would just like this minute it. I am not revealing my breasts again. <laughs> to Margaret. I do have range, you know. This is an entirely different genre from my first play. Different what? Uh, I think he means it's not a comedy. No, if Margaret loves her tits out, it's a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Barnett. Well, it's certainly not going to be a thriller, is it? <laughs> How would you like another stage flat on your head? If the two of you would stop bickering and arguing for one moment, I might explain. How do you spell that word? What? Explain? No, John something. Genre, Joyce. J-E-N. Uh, G-E-N. Oh, yes, of course, yes, I'm... G-E-N. E. -N. e. Or E. Yes, of course, yes, isn't it? Boy. G-E-N, 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 E-R-E. Style, Joyce. Just, just find style. No, don't write anything at all. Just listen to me for a moment. Well, you were the one who told me to take the minutes, Gordon, to avoid any arguments later on. Oh, come on. When have you known us to argue? <laughs> Look, I can't keep going back over things, Joyce. You're going to have to keep up. I'm doing my best, Gordon. Uh, how, how are the short time classes coming along, Joyce? Very well. The teacher is very pleased with me, actually. I'm up to eight words a minute now, and, and my accuracy has gone up to 75%. Right. Not only can you write eight words a minute, you can understand six of them. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how the standing start, Bernard. I mean, 18 months ago, I hadn't a clue to do how to do any of this at all. Well, I think it's very commendable, Joyce. Going to night school just to make our meetings more efficient? Can we get on with it? Don't you think so, Gordon? Yes, of course. Yes, Joyce. We're all eternally grateful. And we don't know where we'd be without your unique skills. Now, can we please get on with the business at hand? Oh, which is? Oh, I forgot. Where were we? It's a good job I'm taking the minutes, isn't it, Gordon? Would you like me to read back to last note? <sighs> yes, please, Joyce. <laughs> um, uh, something, something, um, oh yes, style. And then Gordon said, you have to keep up, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> Is that it? But that's when you distracted me. Something, something, style. <laughs> Well, I would have put that other big word in, but like, you made me take it out again. We were talking about your new play, Bob. <coughs> Thank you, Bernard. Don't mention it. Yes, if you will turn your attention to the next item in the agenda, your chairman has turned his attention to our next production. And as a result... Hold on, our next production? Yes. Our next <coughs> production is the panto. <coughs> Precisely. You've written a panto. I've written the panto, Margaret. Why? Why not? Well, what's wrong with a professional counter manuscript? Nothing, Margaret. Nothing at all. We get a when we invariably torture it, castrate it, starve the any meaning, and then offer up a public consumption. <laughs> Serves like one of our better productions. <laughs> <laughs> I go further, Margaret. If there were a royal society that invention of fruity descripts, we'd be serving life. So you're saying that we should take out the only strong link in the chain? I'm saying, Margaret, and as a society such as ours, it needs a custom written script. Why? So we can cast it to the people that we've got. 
we can play into the strengths that we have if we can find any. And most importantly, to ensure that we have a complete sellout. Hmm. Noble aims. But how do you intend to achieve them? Easy, Margaret. Because my panto is a panto with a twist. What sort of a twist? It's, uh, it's a sex panto. Oh, I couldn't have heard you properly there, you know, for a moment. I thought you said it was a sex panto. <laughs> I did. Oh. Good evening, everybody. Wait, Margaret, wait, wait, hear me out. Look, Gordon, if a pantomime is anything, it is a traditional family entertainment. I refuse to be a part of this perversion. That's why this is so clever, Margaret. Hey, come on, we've got a serious problem on our hands. The audiences keep getting smaller every year. I've watched it happen myself. In year one, it's a family outing. Everybody goes along to it. Mom and dad sit there bored stiff while the kids love it. And in year two, mom brings the kids to a midweek matinee. Dad says, no thanks, I'll go off down to the pub. In year three, mom says, no, no thanks, not this year. Here's a fiver, kids, take yourselves. And then in year four, the kids say, this is crap. Give us the money and we'll off down to the pictures. Not this year, Margaret, because my panto works on two levels. And I bet one of them is gutter level. When are you going to learn to trust me, Margaret? When you learn some common sense, you're playing with fire. There's a principle involved here, Gordon, and it's bigger than all of us. Well, you're the firm believer of democracy and all that lot. How about we put it for the people? What do you think, Bernard? She flattened my banana. <laughs> you know what you're saying in the matter? What? The panto, Bernard. What about the panto? You know me, as long as it uses standard flats and I'm not in it, I don't give a damn. That sort of insight is so valuable, Bernard. Remind me to put you on next year's reading committee. Uh, Joyce, you've been there. Uh, rather quiet on the matter. What do you think? Joyce? Shh. <laughs> Joyce! Where are you, Joyce? I'm doing all right, Gordon. No, where are you? Well, well the bit where you said something about him um, torturing scripts. Joyce! <coughs> well, you see, there was a word I didn't understand. What word, Joyce? Castrate. <laughs> I mean, I know it's got something to do with the cast. And like, well, rate, that's speed, isn't it? <laughs> so like, does it mean like, the speed at which the cast reads? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Joyce, it means chopping off your- Leave it, Bernard, leave it! <laughs> there's, uh, there's no need to put it in technicolor now, is there? Joyce, may I borrow your minutes for a moment? Yes, Gordon. Thank you very much. And can I have a pencil as well? Thank you. <coughs> No more minutes, Joyster. I'm turning into hours. Now just listen. I've written this. Here's Panto. Are you going to support me or not? Gordon, there is something I have to say. Say it, Joyce. <laughs> I have been in this drama for 12 years now. I know that, Joyce. And in all that time, Gordon, I've stuck by you through thick and thin. Lady, thick. <laughs> True, Joyce, and you'll never know how much it means to me. No matter what you said to me over the years, no matter how rude you have been, I've never had the grudge. That's true, Joyce, you never have. Even that time, that time on April 14th, 1987, <laughs> and exactly 25 minutes past it, when you told me, and I believe I'm quoting you exactly here, Gordon, that I had less talent than the bucket of donkey droppings. <laughs> <laughs> Heat of the moment, Joyce, and um, we both know you better than that. <laughs> yes, well, this time you've gone too far. What? The answer's no, Gordon. Good for you, Joyce. What? You heard me. I said no. Emphatically no, with a capital N. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, a shame, Joyce, a, a great shame. <laughs> because... If we were to go ahead with this project, we would, of course, need a um, musical director. Musical director? Someone with a fine voice, Joyce. Someone with an incomparable understanding of choreography. Somebody with 
<gasps> natural rhythm. Oh. And I would like you, Joyce, to help us find him. Oh, Gorda! <laughs> I'm just kidding, Joyce. The job is yours if you want it, Sam. Um, M.D. Joyce. M.D. Musical director. Or C.P. C.P. Castrated pig. <coughs>